Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're starting off with the first page I did for the 100 day project which is with these ghosted neon butterflies. So I'm starting in my large dilutions journal and just chucking in a heap of, um, I was going to say archival paint, of neon paint. These are Dina Wakely ones. Just painting all over the background as I usually do. Usually in three patches, overlapping them, painting till there's no more paint to go and just putting on as many bright colours as I possibly can. Now this is my first layer so I don't care that it's messy, I don't care that there's brush strokes in it, I know I'm going to be adding stuff over the top. So I, um, I suppose it's all about trusting the layers. I know a lot of people get a little bit worried and go, ooh, that's what you're going to see. It's not. Um, in the end, a lot of this was covered over. So um, a lot of people ask me, do I have a really clear plan of what I'm doing? And the answer is no. <laughs> that's why if you look at my history of my videos, everything's different. I sort of have the same themes. I probably do a few of the same backgrounds and so on. But it is very, very unusual that I actually have a plan of where the finished piece is going to take me at the end because I get bored and I go off on tangents very, very easily. So I'm going in and doing mic making all over the top. You can see I'm deliberately doing the mic making all over the um, painted areas and blending through them. So I'm not keeping my marks in a particular area. They're actually going all over the page and that's helping to lead my eye across the page. It's also helping to blend those colours in the background together a little bit. I'm using very big marks in this page because it's quite a wide page. Um, the first few marks were done with neon colours as well and then I've got them in some black and white. So when I first sort of was up to this stage of the page, it was really about the mic making. I didn't really have a plan and I didn't particularly like the mic making in the back so I decided to paint over it. Um, but I thought it wasn't too bad so I was going to go. So now I've got this cool, um, what do you call it, stencil from I think it's Funky Fossils. Please don't quote me on that but I'm pretty sure it's Funky Fossils. Or maybe it's Vision, no it's Vision Images. It's an English company, sorry. I think both English companies, but there you go. Um, it's really cool though, uh, with this butterfly, with the sort of spatty bits. And I'm doing ghosting techniques. So I'm painting over with black and then I'm rubbing it off so you can see what's coming through it. Now you will notice in this page, I am actually only painting parts at a time and there's a really good reason for this. Um, the black gesso in particular, it dries really, really quickly. If I'd painted both pages and tried to do this, I would be really struggling to get the paint off on this second page by now. So just by painting bit by bit, it's just made it a little bit easier for me to remove the paint. I've also used a fair few wet wipes because um, they get very dirty very quickly using black. So just be aware of that. As it, this dries, because the black is really matte, you can actually see how quick it dried as I was working. So anywhere that had gone sort of slightly dull, that meant it had actually dried. Just to help pop the, the butterflies out from the background a little bit and pop the antennae back in, I have gone around with my white pen, really squibbly dots, um, adding in some of those sort of inky splats that are underneath it. Oops, and too much paint because I pressed it down too much. Just to sort of give a bit of a background to it. Um, and I find that I, I like doing this on, on black and white pages. It just gives that nice contrast. Obviously I've got the white in the background and those dots, but just adding that little bit of extra really, really helps. So once I've done that, then the big decision was, well, what do I do next? I'm not just keeping the butterflies. You certainly could, there's nothing wrong with it. Make a really great card front or something as well. Um, but I just wanted I suppose because it's the first day of my 100 day project, I wanted to make it a bit of a focusy type page. So that's sort of what I was doing. And I often find by doing something like this, by outlining my stenciling a little bit, putting in some dots and dashes or mic making, it gives my head a little time to be able to go, ah, oh, that's what you want to do with it. So if I don't come up with a plan. I, this is usually my second job is to splatter something across the top. So this is some neon pink paint or uh, ink that I've splattered across the top and all over my iPad. iPad. You can see me um, wiping it off and some white ink too just to add to those extra splotchy, splotchy bits. 
um, and to blend it all together. So if you're finding your pages looking very, very separate or not sort of flowing together very well, um, I really do suggest adding some splatter over the top because it's very organic. You can't really control where it goes, but it ties everything together. It sounds very counterintuitive, but it does actually work. So this is a um, image from a fashion magazine. This very bendy model with this gorgeous lime green dress. Um, and because it's sort of all neon, this really appealed to me. But because it's May, I couldn't leave it as is. I need to add some extra to it. So I'm picking up on the neons from the background and adding some more in. So she's got now this really neon, stripy yellow and pink dress. I often find adding stripes to clothing really, really easy, but it's a really great way to sort of add something to the final image. I then go around with my white pen and add in the detail again. So this sort of gives it a pop art effect of sort of this 2D image now by flattening it out, by having the paint pen all over it, um, which I really enjoy. I'm also drawing around her face just so it pops out of the background a little bit. When I'd done that, it's like, oh, what do I do now? I did have this big eye that I thought I might pop on. So I, um, I glued that down. It's just a washy eye, I think, from Jane Davenport. So um, I quite like those washy eyes. They're really odd, but they work. The border that I'm putting on was a um, collage matrix, just a page that I'd made, I think, for, art, um, for ACTs that I had a little bit left over, went into my collage pile, and I was able to use it to um, make my little border in the background. So just to help finish off the page and frame it up a little bit. I also decided she needed a bit of a crown. So again, using some of those leftover bits and pieces, I made a crown. It is slightly hanging off the page. That's okay, I don't mind that. It gives it again, that little bit of what's going on here on the page. Um, I also decided I was going to put some wings on her, seeing it was a very butterfly type page and put in a cheek and brightened up her eye with some neon again, some neon green, which I've been using in a lot of my eyes at the moment. Once I'd finished, I decided to put a quote on the page. Um, if nothing changed, there would be no butterflies, which I really liked. And I tried to do... Um, I say scribbly writing, but um, cursive writing on the page. As I do with most of my quotes, um, I'm using my paint pen. Because all, everything in the background is sealed acrylic paint. Um, it does mean if I made a mistake, I could wipe it away with a wipe, wipe over the top. So it gives me a little bit of flexibility. But I do know it scares some people from doing that too. Once I'd written it out, first of all, I then thickened up my letters just so it popped out a little bit. And then I'm going back in again with the neon to do the drop shadow, which you can't really see here, but hopefully in the close-up it will make a bit of a difference. So you can see I'm sort of repeating themes a lot. I've got the neon in the background, which is dulled down by the black paint over the top. I've got the neon in the dress, I've got the neon in the border, and I've also got it going around my letters as well. So you've just got that repetition happening over and over again, which again helps to tie everything together in the, the end result. So you don't have to use neon, obviously, but if you were doing a similar page in this, I'd have similar colours repeating over and over again, so you've got that repetition happening. So once I've finished putting in my um, drop shadow, I've come to the end of my page. So you can see here in the close-up how it's all come together. The um, green in the writing is very subtle. You see it more in um, the close-up of my actual journal, um, but it helps to pop the, the writing out from the background, gives it a little bit more shape. So I hope you have a go at ghosting using neon backgrounds or using some neon in your work. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.